Well, things have seemed pretty quiet on the mid-journey front, but as it turns out, they have not been napping. They have instead been cooking, and indeed, we are starting to see the first dishes coming out of the oven. So today, we have our first big release of, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily the next era of mid-journey, but at least is a big step on the road to version seven. So let's take a dive into editor, what it is, how it works, what it's great at, and of course, where it can use some improvements. Okay, let's dive in. So Midjourney's new editor feature is a pretty interesting one, as I think that this marks like the first demarcation line between Discord and web. I know I can hear all of you Discord haters like screaming with joy right now. Okay, as a bit of housekeeping, Currently, Editor is only available to those of you who have generated over 10,000 images or you are an annual subscriber or you have been a member for at least 12 months. This is kind of the same pattern that they released the Midjourney website with, although I am really hoping it will not take as long. I don't think it will. Now, at its core, Editor is, I mean, it's pretty much in and out painting, and we've definitely seen the likes of it before from, you know, something like Adobe's Gen Fill. But I will say that Midjourney definitely has a few tricks up its sleeve that turn it into a real powerhouse. To get started with Editor, and this is completely undocumented and really important, the first thing that we're going to want to do is head down here to light mode and change that to dark mode. I've said it about 100 times on the channel, only psychopaths use light mode. Um, the next thing that you'll want to do is come over to our new edit tab. As we can see here, we now have the ability to either edit from a URL or we can upload our own image. So we'll first start off by editing a mid-journey image. So uh, of course, our man in the blue business suit walking down a busy city sidewalk. I've actually changed this prompt out because our guy kept getting jaywalking tickets. Um, so this is actually a pretty good uh, version to work with for editor, mostly because, you know, we have mid-journey famous like back to camera, but I do like the background here a lot. So uh, what we're going to do is actually I can just right click on this and hit copy image URL. Now, as a note, you can come over here and hit the editor button, and that will sort of take you to a light version of the editor. Um, I found that to be a little bit on the limited side, so we're just gonna go directly back over to the edit tab. So from here, I'm just gonna simply hit edit from URL and then paste in uh, the URL that we had previously copied. Uh, hit okay, and that should load up. This, of course, brings us into our editor. We can you know, then begin playing around with the aspect ratio if we want to. Uh, additionally, down here, there is a whole tab for for uh, various common aspect ratios. So we're just gonna pop that over to 16.9. Uh, and then from there, you can uh, you know hit this move button here and change the placement of your initial image. Um, I, ha I will note, oh, it's working now. Uh, earlier today, the scaling up was not working. Um, it seems to now, although you know obviously there's only so much you can do in terms of scaling. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, one thing that I really like about all of these new Canvas features is that it really gives you the ability to do like super off composition stuff like over here, for example, and then we can generate the rest of it. I just think that, you know, we've seen so much in AI generated imagery that just nails that rule of thirds and perfect composition. So it's actually almost refreshing to do stuff that is technically wrong. Uh, anyhow, we're gonna leave him here. And uh, from here, we can simply prompt. So of course, as just a straight extension, uh, we can put the exact same prompt in again, uh, hit submit, and it'll begin generating. And of course, in just a few moments, we now have a full extension of our city. We actually have four different versions of it as well. Now, I will give you that, uh, there seems to be a car parked on the sidewalk here, but have you been to New York? Our driver is 100% yelling, look, I'm DoorDash, I'll be here for like 30 seconds. But of course, if we absolutely do not want it in and we wanna change some other details, well, that is where, you know, editor comes into play. Um, so we have the erase button here. And of course, we'll give us a brush, which you can control the size of either by using the brush size slider or uh, the plus and minus buttons also seem to work. Uh, so we'll begin by taking our guy in the blue business suit out. We don't necessarily have to get like, you know, super fine details with our brush here. Um, one thing that I will note if we want to do more intricate things, uh, what hasn't been implemented yet is zooming into the edit canvas yet. Um, if you can zoom in on your, you know, like manually on your computer, you can kind of cheat it. Uh, but I would like to see that at some point built in. Again, this is like day one, so I'm not bagging on mid journey here at all. 
So giving this the old prompt modification to ensure that we get somebody facing forward, uh, we've now altered the prompt to a man in a blue business suit wearing stylish sunglasses and smiling, both indicating like, I want to be looking at his face, walks down a busy city street. Now, what's kind of cool is that you actually have access to all of your you know, mid-journey stuff uh, as well. So we can control stylization here. Um, I'm gonna take that down to yeah, 300. Um, I can do it either in standard or in raw, and you can even do different uh, versions as well. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and submit the edit and indeed uh, off it goes. Now, can it get a little funky? Uh, yes, it 100% can. It, listen, it's all still AI imagery. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily bad, but you know, obviously in terms of like tonally, I mean, our guy does not fit in at all. Uh, lighting is actually completely off. Uh, a couple of other generations that I did, eh, somewhat passable, don't love him as a character. Um, this guy looks completely out of place, um, though, you know, rad hairstyle, man. Um, and this guy is probably our closest in terms of matching the scene, but again, not that dynamic a pose. So one of the tricks that I've picked up on here is to actually come back up here and use your initial image, uh, the one that we began with, as a uh, style reference. So you wanna come up and hit the little paperclip icon here and then run the prompt again. So that gives Midjourney a little more context in terms of what you're looking for. So uh, yeah, this definitely is a lot better than you know our last generation of guys. Um, so yeah, not terrible. I think that he, I think actually our first guy is probably the guy that we'll work with. Object removal, I think it does work a little bit better with. So let's take our, our uh, door dasher out here. You know, I'm going to take the people out here too, because so we'll give it a proper prompt, uh, city sidewalk with people walking, dash, dash, no cars. And uh, let's, uh, this should do it. And we end up with this again, showing that Midjourney does have a real sense of humor uh, because, you know, indeed we still have cars there. It just created an entire lane for them. So well played Midjourney, well played. So now we have a composition. I will say that I'm not overly thrilled with the like fidelity and overall aesthetics of it. We're gonna take a look at how we can kind of muck that about in a little bit. Now, one of the great things about Editor is revisiting you know, older images that you generated where you weren't able to accomplish what you were looking for with you know, our old very region, uh, you know, the old version of Midjourney in painting. So uh, taking this image, this is our uh, cyberpunk woman with long white hair walking down a city street in the snow. Um, you know, this one was done in kind of a concept art style. So one of the things that, this is way back in version 5.2, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do was to test out to see if we could put a wolf walking next to her. The results were, I mean, uh, you know, to put it kindly, mixed. It wouldn't really land at 100%, although I do have to admit that little uh, wolf there is adorable. So taking this 5.2 image over to editor and, you know, painting out a area that the wolf should be and giving it the prompt, a wolf walks beside the woman, graphic novel, comic book illustration, we end up with results like this. And now we finally have the version of this image that I was looking for all that time ago. The other big feature in editor is the retexture feature. And this one is actually pretty powerful. So just to give you an idea of how this works, we'll stick with our cyberpunk woman and our good boy. Uh, and then we're gonna move over to the retexture tab here. Retexture basically takes the stylization of your input image and applies it to another image. Although I will say that, yeah, I mean, even Midjourney says here to avoid using prompts that are incompatible with the general structure of the image. So, you know, if I were to try to do a retexture with an image of like clowns in a hot air balloon, might not work so well here. So uh, taking this version six image uh, that was more in a photographic style of roughly the same prompt and using this as a uh, retexture. So dropping that in as an image reference to our retexture. And then I did actually put it, change it to style once again. I'm not sure if that has, uh, if that does anything. Uh, we hit submit. Now, is it perfect? I don't know. To me, it's still a little bit on the janky side, especially when you start really pushing in on like say her face here. Uh, we had a little bit of kind of a blobby mess right there. The wolf looks great. Actually, I think the textures on the wolf look fine. Um, and you know, the city background actually looks but pretty fantastic in my opinion. So you might need to take it through an additional creative upscaler, something like Magnific, uh, where we go from a result like this 
to this. Uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Or you can try out something like Topaz Photo, which just updated with AI features as well. I'll say I've never been overly impressed with Midjourney's upscaler, but again, that doesn't necessarily seem to be a major priority for them, and that's okay. I mean, look, not every platform has to do everything perfectly. Uh, Midjourney does plenty of stuff really, really well. So if creative upscaling is kind of mid on the mid journey side, not a big deal. We have plenty of other options. Now, granted, I think the two spots where you don't really have to lean on creative upscalers quite as much is when you're dealing with artistic styles or uh, actual photographs, which we can now, you know, harness the power of mid journey for. So just kind of seeing how it works creatively, uh, we'll take this photo of me clearly used as a thumbnail at some point or another in which I am pointing at nothing because that's what people in thumbnails do. So we're gonna drop this into edit uploaded image, give that a second to uh, upload. And of course, in a few moments, we have our canvas. So uh, what I'm gonna do is actually just reduce me here. Um, and then another neat feature within editor is suggest prompt, which basically kind of works a little bit how old describe works. That said, it does look like they're still kind of tuning it in considering that what suggested prompt came up with was a photo of Paul McCartney sitting at his desk. I am not Paul McCartney. I actually really always wanted to be a George. George was the cool one. But let's just take this prompt as it is uh, in the suggested prompt and fire it off. And sure enough, after a few moments, my collection of guitars has greatly expanded. Uh, no left-handed basses though, that's kind of weird. Little Paul McCartney trivia there for you. He is a Southpaw. Another interesting idea that you can play around with uh, utilizing this nine by 16 stock image, then we're gonna extend this out into 16 by nine. We end up with some choices like this. And since this is giving me sort of arrival vibes, uh, I'm gonna make a spaceship. So just heading over to you know regular mid journey, I prompted this guy up and now we're gonna head back into the edit, block off a section using our erase tool and then put the mid journey generated spaceship there along with the prompt cinematic DVD screen grab. I have a large spaceship floating in the air inspired by the film, The Arrival. And then I just threw in IMAX and 35 millimeter, see what happens. And we end up with this image. Now I will say that mid journey in the edit module is still doing that thing that you know mid journey does where when you provide it with a reference image it's, it's really just taking it as a reference something to be inspired by you're not going to get a one-to-one -one clone of it but overall it's not a bad image it does feel like it needs kind of like one more layer of blending just to kind of bring it all together but uh yeah for the most part fairly solid so to get over that blend hurdle, we can of course go over and give it one more retexture, uh, this time without an image prompt, just cinematic DVD screen grab of a, and then I basically just used what the describe function gave me from there. Yeah, we ended up with this, which definitely now starts to look a lot more baked in and together. So while editor works pretty well as, well, you know, as the tin describes as an editor, I do think that as per typical mid journey, it also works really well for you know just general exploration. Uh, Tatiana Segluvia puts together this you know uh, wandering backpacker, actually multiple wandering backpackers all over the world. And just as an FYI, C uh, ref character referencing does seem to work in uh, editor, kind of. I mean, as, as well as C ref usually works. Um, so just for an example, I ended up taking a man in a blue business suit. I ended up uploading an image of myself, uh, putting that in as a character reference, and then just brushing the face, uh, and then using the prompt, a guy named Tim. It came out with this. I mean, to be fair, like, Mid Journey always kind of scrambles faces when you use them as C refs. So uh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, it's it's okay. Uh, but weirdly, it also gave me like this kind of like Benedict Cumberbatch sort of face. So Mid Journey either believes I'm Paul McCartney or Benedict Cumberbatch. I'll take either of them. I'll circle back and test it a little further with some Mid Journey generated faces to see if that works a little bit better. I tend to think it probably will. Another great use case here, uh, EG just burned a ton of fast hours here, I'm presuming, uh, just you know, rotating through a bunch of different outfits on this bottle. Um, yeah, very cool. Marco shows us a number of retextures on one model. I mean, yeah, I really honestly do believe that retexture is kind of the secret weapon in editor, uh, especially if you combine it with your S refs. I think that this is gonna be a very you know powerful tool. And lastly, Christopher Fryant gives us this piece of brilliance utilizing Mid Journey's editor and running that through Kling. Uh, yeah, absolutely love this. 
so ultimately, while Mid Journey, yes, they may be a little bit late to the whole like image editing canvas game. Uh, I don't have a problem with that because they brought Mid Journey to it. Look, is it perfect on day one? It is not. There's still, you know, a lot of hiccups, but there's a lot to explore just in editor. And there's a lot more coming with Mid Journey, including obviously version seven. Uh, they are working on 3D models and a video model. But the thing that actually has me really excited is the storyteller project or the storytelling project. Project. They've been a little dodgy on what that will ultimately mean or look like, but in a recent office hours, uh, David Holtz did say we'll be getting a chance to take a look at it fairly soon, so uh, I will definitely let you know as soon as I hear more about that. In the meantime, hey look, an old school Mid Journey video. It's been a minute since I've actually gotten the chance to just do one video on Mid Journey, so uh, yeah, this was really nice. It was like coming back home. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.